Welcome to the Central Florida Gardening Show. Hey, Chris. Welcome to uh, my survival gardening for garden for city slickers. What we have here is a raised bed garden that would be typical of the concept of garden that uh, I promote for food production for gardeners in the city. And as you can see, it's about five by nine or so. And uh, we have just aerated this garden two shovels deep and uh, uh, heavily moved this soil all around, re-leveled uh, it out really carefully, and now we're about ready to water this in. What we're going to do as we water it in is create a crust on the top of this soil. And that crust uh, will hold the moisture in after it's been watered, each time it's been watered. And we'll only break the soil where, where we're going to plant our new plantings. So we won't break the soil again. We'll water it in, then we'll just put holes in this uh, central crust where we're going to put our plantings. That heavily limits the weeds that will nat would naturally occur if that crust was not on the soil. Our objective here uh, at the Survival Garden is to produce food. And that is why uh, I've written this book, which was essentially started to be a journal for my children. You see, I have uh, lived through five recessions in my lifetime. And I have found that each recession is getting, in some cases, worse and worse until the last one, which was the Great Recession. And uh, so I'm afraid that my children should really know how to produce food in an urban setting. So I set out to learn how to do that. Well, it took me five years, Chris, to get it figured out. I, I made all kinds of mistakes. I had things that didn't grow. I had plants that burned up. I had plants that produced no fruit at all. And so after a significant amount of effort, I figured out how to grow food, food producing plants the very first time. And that's what this book represents, how to pr produce food in an urban setting each and every time the first time so you don't have to wait to figure it out or do as I did spend five years learning how to how to be a gardener we're potentially not going to have that kind of luxury there may be a time when we have to all of us grow food as neighbors one to the next to help each other and that's what this book is designed to do is teach you how to be a successful gardener right out of the box not knowing anything about gardening each and every time the first time well, that's it from uh, the, um, the Survival Garden, and I thank you, Chris, for the opportunity to talk to your, uh, your audience. Well, thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and one last time. Why don't you tell us the title of the book, and then go ahead and repeat your name. Okay. I'm Scott Frost. Thank you, Chris. And this book is called Survival Gardening for City Slickers. And, uh, again, it is a book designed specifically to produce food in the urban setting. How about availability? Where can you get this book? It's available on every major market online. You can get it as a download on your Kindle. You can get it as a hard copy on eBay. You can get it as a hard copy through uh, Amazon.com and all the major booksellers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Hey, Chris. Welcome back to uh, Survival Gardening for City Slickers. As you can see, uh, our garden bed is uh, ready. Uh, and it's been about uh, four weeks since you've been here, and we're delighted to have you back. Thanks for coming. What we're going to do now is we're going to plant this, but I wanted to show you how we do the garden layout for production. In this case, we'll call it pre-production because we're going to do our pre-plantings until these seedlings all come out. Then we're going to put them all in small cups until they grow a little bit hardier. Then we're going to replant so that we get the most production for the size of the garden that we have. Let me show you in just a minute what we'll plant about. I always use these. These are like little bathroom drink cups. These are made out of paper. Uh, they're, they're totally green. They don't have any chemicals or anything on them. They do have wax on them. Otherwise, they're made out of, in a lot of cases, even recycled paper. Um, these are like two and a half ounces. And when these seedlings come out, I'll take them all out and put them in a big tray and then I'll go turn on a movie and uh, just uh, replant them in these cups. 
And one of the things that I found was uh, really helpful is I lay the soil on one side of the cup and turn it sideways and plant the plant in sideways so, so that the root went down to the bottom of the cup and put the rest of the soil in and then I stand it up and that way the root gets covered with the soil and it doesn't uh, right next to the edge of the cup. I like it a little more centered so it has a little room to grow for the roots to uh, grow out. Anyway, these are really great. Uh, they tear apart real easily when you're ready to uh, transplant. So you'll find uh, these, these little cups are just perfect for uh, pre-growing pre for your early season growth. Now what we're going to do is uh, show you this layout. What we have here is uh, we have about a 5 by 9 garden bed. And um, this garden bed is uh, already labeled, and I'll show you one of these labels. For example, in this row we're going to plant tomatoes. So I've taken a regular shim that uh, you get at any hardware store. I row tomatoes on it, and I put it in the ground here. That will last several seasons. Uh, it, um, really, it really strong, and of course it's not this paper envelope, so it will last throughout the entire uh, growing season. And I won't lose track of what I have here. Now these are regular tomatoes. And as I say in my book, Survival Gardening for City Slickers, uh, save these because the backs of these envelopes have a tremendous amount of information for such a small space that really help a gardener be successful the very first time. And of course, that's what Survival Gardening for City Slickers is all about. Growing food you can eat the very first year you plant your garden. Let me show you how I do this. Now I'm just going to crawl along this box here so that uh, we can see one another. And uh, just give you an idea what these seeds are. This is again, uh, this particular tomato is a, it is a hybrid. Again, I'm not a hobbyist for pure seeds. I'm a hobbyist for food seeds. So my orientation is to grow as much food as you possibly can out of, out of a given space. And we're just gonna go ahead and plant these almost one at a time by hand, uh, about every two inches apart, easy enough so that I can get the roots apart. If you grow them real close together, and I have done that by accident before, um, they're, they're so close together that, uh, that you have to untangle the roots to transplant them to other gardens. You can see they're going in. This is about the right number. It looks like a, it's just about right for we got. There's another one right there. And as you can see, I have this little groove here. Let me show you what I made it with. I use this uh, three qu quarter by three quarter stick and I just lay it on the garden bed and I rock it back and forth and then draw it across and I get this perfect little one half inch ditch which is about the planting depth of most seeds. Now that these are in, I just carefully cover them up by hand and uh, as you can see they get covered and then I'm going to just pat this down a little bit so that in the first watering they don't get washed out because seeds are lighter than soil and if you water it heavy the very first time you water they'll virtually float out of the soil so you're better off to do light waterings for several times before you uh, water your, your seeds heavily. Okay, well that's that row. Why don't we plant another one? Hey Chris, I, as I said, we'll do another planting of another row. This is uh, lettuce, as you can see. Again, just a shim marked with lettuce. It lasts a long time. Put that right in the ground. And this uh, groove is already cut here. It's about half to three-eighths of an inch deep. And these are the lettuce seeds. You probably won't even be able to see them in my hand. They're just tiny little flakes. They almost look like dirty flakes. I'll try to give you a little bit of a close-up. But they're little teeny tiny. And because they're so small, I'm not going to be as concerned. I'm just going to go ahead and plant and drag this across. And I'm going to just go ahead and let a lot of seeds fall in here. Seeds are real inexpensive. Uh, what's more expensive is the time if they don't work. So you want to make sure you get plenty. And again, I'm just sort of covering the bottom of that row with the seeds. It's way too many. It's okay. 
better too many than not enough. Now, here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and turn this in. Again, this row is up three eighths to a half inch deep. And we have seeds uh, uh, not even a half inch apart here, down that whole row. And I'll go ahead and pat those in. And I think I have this garden set up for a second row. So we'll do a second row of uh, lettuce. And we'll just go ahead and again, plant and drag as we go along. And these are going in. I'm sure you can't see it as easily from the camera because they're so tiny. But, um, and I actually have more than, way more than I need in, in both of these rows. But we're going to do it anyway. As I say, our objective is to be successful gardeners. And if we shoot a little heavy and get a little more plants, that's better than, than uh, not shooting heavy enough and not having food because our objective is to grow food. Okay, now we have this row and this row in. They're both lettuce. And... Uh, so uh, now what will happen is well, when we lightly water these in, and again, don't water heavy the first time. The seeds will float out of the soil if you water too heavy. Water lightly several times, then these will come up. And when they do come up, I'll transplant them into small cups, two and a half inch cups like we spoke about earlier. And uh, I'll give away a lot of those to my neighbors. And so they'll, my whole neighborhood will have lettuce all, all the season long. And I'm happy to give it to them, but I won't have room for them in my garden. Hey Chris, welcome back to uh, uh, City Slicker Gardens here in uh, Winter Park, Florida. Uh, this is a garden based on my book, Survival Gardening for City Slickers, available uh, at all the major booksellers and as downloads. Um, this garden is already planted, and as you can see, I've used uh, shingles to uh, mark each of the rows. And this garden has been planted about two days now. And one of the remarkable things about it is that I have two rows of, uh, of uh, radishes in here, and these radishes are already starting to come up and seed. And uh, it would be a little bit difficult to see because they're so new and so small, but right there's part of the row of radishes actually beginning to pop out. And, and grow. Now one thing that's very important about radishes is try not to thin them too much. I have much better luck with regular red round radishes rather than exotic radishes. And uh, when you plant them close together, let them grow close together. You'll get much more yield if you just leave them alone. Don't try and transplant them. Let them grow close together uh, and uh, just thin them out as you eat them. Uh, but otherwise, just let them grow close together and you're, you'll get really good results. Radishes are great for children because they come up so fast and the kids get a big kick out of watching them grow.